Welcome to Where Are They Now, where we reach into the archives of Lenape, Shawnee, Cherokee, and Seneca High Schools and invite selected alumni to share their memories and fill us in on their career paths after commencement. Since Lenape's first graduating class in 1961, Shawnee's in 1972, Cherokee's in 1978, and Seneca's in 2005, over 77,000 individuals have received diplomas from these four schools. Join us now for another Lenape District alumni interview on Where Are They Now? Hello and welcome to season 20 of Where Are They Now? I'm Mark Sonsini, a 1996 graduate of Cherokee High School. And today we'll be talking with a Shawnee alumna from the class of 2009. She is Senior Group Director and Head of Operations for Integrated Intelligence at Real Chemistry, residing in Doylestown, PA. I'd like to welcome Brianna Pereira Belford to the show. Brianna, thanks for being with us today. Hi. Thanks for having me. Great to have you here. I'm excited to uh, hear about your career in healthcare communications and analytics. Um, but first, let's talk about your time back at Shawnee uh, for a little bit first. You grew up in Medford, right? Yes, yep. And your mom currently uh, works at Shawnee. She does, she does. She's a secretary in the guidance office, um, which she was not when I was there, but. <laughs> Uh, that would have been kind of fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, and any siblings that went to Shawnee with you? Yep. Uh, I have a younger sister, Alina. She was four years younger, so we were never actually at Shawnee at the same time or any, in any school at the same time. Um, but we're very close today. Good. Let's talk about some of the teachers that had an impact on you during your time at Shawnee. The first one you mentioned was uh, John Kehoe for English. Tell us about him. Yes, I loved my classes with Mr. Kehoe. Um, AP English, I think, was the, the main one that I remember taking with him. And it feels like it's a long time ago now, um, but I really felt like not a, he, he developed in us a really uh, discerning kind of interpretive way of reading literature and any sort of books. And I still think back to what he taught us when I read books for pleasure. Um, so I loved that. And then I, um, you know, I, I loved specifically writing in his class, okay. uh, the, the kind of guidance and critiques he gave uh, in terms of writing essays was definitely used once I got to college. Um, I found that my writing in particular was like definitely ready for uh, all the different classes I would have to write papers for in college. Gotcha. And then a couple other ones were for foreign language. There was Charles Leonard and Lisa Angela of Reibel now. Um, and foreign language ended up being an important thing for you. So tell us about them. I loved both of them. I loved taking Spanish and Italian. Um, foreign language is really my passion forever. My family is half Portuguese, so I, I came okay. into foreign language classes kind of having the Portuguese background okay. and knowing the Portuguese language, which is similar to Spanish and Italian. Mm -hmm. And they were just so good at kind of embracing where I was and the knowledge that I had and helping me apply that to different languages, um, which I think says a lot about their passion and just how fantastic they are as teachers and as people. Mrs. Reibel now uh, was definitely someone who encouraged me to um, pursue foreign language in college as well. Okay. Uh, I looked at her alma mater when I was considering and doing my college search as Middlebury. Um, but she was just fantastic. And she also encouraged me to go on that, that Italy trip uh, that happened in 2008. So yeah, I, I, when I think back to my years at Shawnee in the classroom, I definitely think of those three. So tell us more about that Italy trip in 2008. What kind of, was that your first experience uh, in Europe or out of the country? Uh, not, not overall, because we had gone to Portugal with my family in the past, Okay. Um, but it was my first trip to another country in Europe, certainly. Um, and it's still the only time I went to Italy. I definitely want to go back. Uh, but yeah, it was um, the year, the year that year, there wasn't an Italian class trip to Italy. There was a Latin class trip, but, but she coordinated with a Latin teacher to have me attend that trip because I was in her Italian class. Okay. And uh, yeah, we went to Rome, Florence and Venice and uh, it was just fantastic. I, I have still have 
close friends that we that we were made on that trip um that we still kind of keep in touch through social media now and some of the most like funny memories uh <laughs> of probably my life happened uh in that i think it was like 10 days over the summer wow um but yeah it was it was great let's talk about some of the activities you're involved in in shawnee uh there was spanish club art club track and field tell me about those yeah um natural extensions of what i really liked doing in the classroom um i i loved my art classes as well uh mrs cannon was definitely my favorite art teacher and i took the art major classes with her whenever i got to um do some extra curricular art i went in that direction um track and field was definitely uh a good to be honest way to, for me to keep in shape for field hockey yeah um I was not, I was definitely not the most uh, talented track athlete. I think the coaches would probably agree, but <laughs> I liked it. I liked the team. I liked having that extra, you know, thing to do to yeah. keep me, you know, motivated and engaged throughout the year. What events did you do? Uh, oh, I was a, a long distance runner, which I never run anymore, uh, <laughs> but I did enjoy it then. I did the mile usually, it was okay. the, the 1600. Okay. Uh, and then, of course, the big one for you was field hockey. Uh, your yep. um, junior year, I guess it was, 2007, uh, Shawnee won the state championship and also won the tournament of champions championship, which was the first time in school history that uh, anyone had done that. Games that we actually covered here on LDTV Sports. And uh, the Tournament of Champions game, you had a three to nothing shutout. Tell me about that, the whole experience of winning the state title and then the Tournament yeah. of Champions as well. Still to this day, one of the best experiences of my life. Um, and the day that we won the Tournament of Champions, probably the, the best day, because it was just perfect. You know, you can't, can't ask for more than a win with a, a three nothing win. Yeah. Um, and certainly as a goalie, having that zero is is wonderful. We were just so proud of um, really coming together as a team for the state championship. And of course we had, uh, you know, some challenges getting there as any team does. Mm -hmm. um, but I remember when I think of the tournament of champions win, I think of um, how it was almost like the stars aligned in the plays themselves, like certain skills or plays or passes that specific people had been working on for weeks just clicked um everything really came together and when i i think the best memory that i have and when i think of, when i talk about the experience with um you know coach phelps now tolliver or even former teammates the moment that stands out the most that i think set the tone and also kind of taught me something about life in general uh -huh. is uh you know the, the game is about to start there's a lot of tension we're we're here at this big moment no one's ever been here before there's a lot of people in the stands actually it was at tcnj so it was like a big venue right um we knew you know the tv was watching <laughs> and and we're all huddled together the team i was a goalie the team was already out on the field and i was getting my pep talk from from coach um now Mataloni and you know I go to run out onto the field and I just tripped over my equipment and <laughs> fell like flat on my on my chest and like slid on the field and the whole team like the group that the starters who were on the field just cracked up and started laughing <laughs> and it was not embarrassing it was like the perfect breaking of the tension yeah um that led like suddenly we were we were good we were happy we knew we were going to be fine and uh michelle uh one of our starters she ended up scoring in the first 30 seconds after that and at that moment we were we, we knew we were good we were on a roll it was just great it was like a don't take yourself too seriously right. laughing is important um break that tension and then everything flows after that that's good yeah i don't know if the uh we'll have to look back i don't know if the cameras captured that or not but it's okay it worked out you guys had the last <laughs> laugh so it's all right um, yeah. Yeah. After that year, you were named uh, Goalie of the Year by the Field Hockey Club of South Jersey, and that was a, must have been a pretty exciting honor for you. Yeah, it was. I worked ex really, really hard for that, uh, and it was. It's you know, it's an honor to be recognized by your teammates and your coaches and your obviously your parents and your friends. 
Um, but then to to be recognized on a level where the I, I believe it was the coaches from other programs in South Jersey voted. Mm -hmm. And so to be recognized by our competitors leaders is just another level of um, of honor and respect that I think about a lot. Yeah, absolutely. And we found in the yearbook, you wrote a nice uh, message to your coaches, uh, to Ms. Phelps. You wrote, thank you so much for motivating us to always play our hardest and for getting us in amazing shape. We were always faster than the other team. And to Ms. McCormick, you said, thanks for always being there to get me out of my bad moods and for being there when I needed to talk about anything. So they were definitely there for you, uh, you know, not just in school or on the field, but anything that you needed. Yeah. They really were, um, and they really made us into a team. I I went on to play Division One field hockey in college, and I can say that my the coaches at Shawnee really they made us a team and brought out the best in us more than my Division One field hockey coaches. Any friends uh, from Shawnee you're still in touch with? Two of my closest friends are Erica Tama, now Fiorentina. Now and Sam Amasano, um, now bleed in. They were also on the field hockey team uh, and we're still very close today. Excellent. All right, so after you mentioned uh, you're leaving Shawnee and going to play uh, Division One hockey at uh, Georgetown University, and you're also uh, studying for a degree in linguistics there. Tell us about that and, and what you were, uh, you know, what you were looking at to do. Uh, so Georgetown was really the perfect perfect school for me because I was able to um, compete in sports that I that I obviously had been passionate about. Um, but it's a school where the academics definitely come first. Mm -hmm. And that's what I knew in the for the long term of my life was going to be really important. Um, field hockey, of course, was was there and it's a kind of a character building building thing and in, in athletics, but I knew I was not going to, you know, be a professional field hockey player. Yeah. Uh, so I, you know, as I mentioned, I love foreign language. I always liked whether the, even English, I liked language and I like learning um, in that sense. And I started out uh, taking just Spanish and Portuguese classes at Georgetown. But then when I, I really realized that I liked the way language worked okay. as it's on its own, not just the learning of the languages themselves and found out that that's actually linguistics. And um, linguistics is a whole other separate department and field of study that Georgetown has a really deep um, you know, history in. So that kind of became my primary major with Spanish and Portuguese being uh, kind of secondary. And I focus on any, everything from um, discourse analysis. So that's uh, analyzing what it's like when p two people communicate, what are those dynamics at play there. Okay. Um, fun fact, the uh, FBI, if, if you know the series Mindhunter, um, okay. the guy who kind of is the real person behind that series, he came and spoke at one of our classes about you know, how the FBI started to bring linguistic analysis into uh, profiling, which okay. I thought was really cool. And is that something that you thought you might want to go into or what were your goals at that time? Yeah. yeah. At the time that, you know, as if you're studying linguistics, that's like the coolest thing you could sure. possibly do. Um, but I ended up getting an internship in healthcare research. Uh, okay. So kind of like market research for healthcare companies and ended up finding out that I really enjoyed that. It, I, it's an opportunity to always keep learning. Um, so I left the the potential path of being in the FBI or the CIA <laughs> behind me. And uh, now I've been working in healthcare for almost 10 years. Okay. And you're the senior group director and head of operations for integrated intelligence at Real Chemistry, formerly the W2O group. Um, so kind of explain to us what, what it is that your job uh, entails. I get asked this question a lot. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> Real Chemistry is a global healthcare and communications and marketing firm, so like an agency. Um, and my department, which is integrated intelligence, is the research, analytics, market research part of the group. So what we do is we conduct um, 
market research, the things that you may be familiar with, like surveys and focus groups, but also a lot of digital and social analytics to help inform the campaigns that we run for our clients. Um, okay. And I'm used to talking about this all day, every day. Uh, so, so I'll try to make sure to make it make sense, but campaigns, it could be TV campaigns, um, okay. commercials that you see for drugs, uh, or recently we worked on the FDA and ad councils, PSAs around COVID uh, vaccines. Okay. So anything that has to do with communicating and marketing about healthcare, my group within our company um, does the research to inform the language that's used, um, what people care about, how to make a message really land, and then we also measure the impact of those campaigns. Okay. And aside from working, uh, you know, like you said, for kind of uh, general, you know, healthcare uh, regarding the vaccines and stuff, you're working with um, private health healthcare companies as well, like somebody's uh, you know, health provider, they might uh, work with you as far as, you know, a marketing campaign or uh, like customer experience and that kind of thing too? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, especially in the research group that I work for, um, we focus on, you know, illuminating the patient experience or the caregiver experience so that these large companies know what it's really like to be someone who um, is dealing with a medical issue or a, or a disease, um, what kind of support they need, what their level of understanding is about whatever they're going through so that the, you know, support materials, the, the pieces of paper that come in the, in the insert um, for the treatment that you're taking make sense and are communicating in a way that uh, you understand. And when you started out with uh, W2O group, that was basically a, a startup, right? And you were in on the ground floor and you really helped grow that into uh, a, a much larger company than it was, right? Yeah, so it was a smaller company that ended up being acquired by W2O group. Um, okay. So but when I started at the smaller company, we were only four people um, and that was in 2014. And we did exclusively social media research and analytics for the same kinds of clients. Okay. Um, we were just the research group. And then after, you know, building up that company to about 20 people, um, we were acquired by W2O Group, which at the time was PR communications company for the same sorts of clients. So they bought our company so that they would have the research and analytics kind of uh, powerhouse in-house. Um, and then since then we've, that, that was like a 300, we went from like four people to 20 people were acquired into a company of about 300. And okay. now since 2016, we're at about 2000 people. So wow. it's, um, been a lot of change and a lot of growth. That's great. And a big part of your job has been kind of scaling that, uh, business model up, right. As you've, as you've been growing. Yeah. So that's where my. My career path, I guess, gets interesting and maybe unexpected uh, because I studied foreign language and linguistics. Um, I got into healthcare because I was interested in understanding the communication dynamics between doctors and patients. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, as I progressed and because I had that experience of being at a really small company and kind of making the decisions about how the small company is run and how we do things, as we grew in scale, I kind of grew out of the, the role of being the researcher and more into the role of running the business, um, okay. which is actually something that I really enjoy. Great, and you're also um, a member of the Healthcare Business Women's Association. Uh, you've done presentations, been on posters for the uh, Pharma Market Research Group um, annual conference. Tell us about those experiences. Do you enjoy doing that? I do. It's been a long time since anything in person, of course. Yeah. Um, but I do. At the, at the end of the day, I am someone who really likes learning. I loved school. Um, so any chance I get to essentially nerd out at like a <laughs> conference with other people, whether they be other researchers or clients right. uh, who want to really dive into the details of what we learned and what it means, um, that's like my fun, the fun part of my job. Yeah. Uh, so I really, uh, yeah, I do enjoy that. And I hope at some point all of these 
you know, professional events will be back in person, but still everything is virtual. Yeah, yeah we'll get there. Um, let's talk about your life outside yeah. of work a little bit. Uh, you got married in 2017. Tell me about how you met your husband. I met him at his sister's wedding uh, that I happened to be invited to in 2013, when I right before I graduated from, from Georgetown. Um, it was kind of a setup and she was right. It was, it was the perfect, uh, he was the perfect person for me. So we met at, at uh, her wedding and um, then got married, I guess, four years later. Yeah, four years okay. later. And then in March of 2020, you welcomed your first child uh, right at the beginning of the pandemic. What was that experience like? It must have been absolutely nerve wracking for you. Yeah. yeah, it was bizarre in a lot of ways because in March of 2020, we all thought that this was going to be just a couple of weeks or maybe a month. Mm -hmm. And um, the hospital had a strange vibe to it. It was kind of empty. Doctors and nurses didn't know what was coming. No one was wearing masks yet. Um, but, you know, then we came home from the hospital and we were in stay at home orders. Uh, we, my husband and I essentially were home with our now almost two year old son, but at the time, tiny baby by ourselves for most of the first like 10 to 12 weeks, yeah. um, just being cautious because again, we didn't know that kids were mostly, you know, we didn't sure. know anything that we know now. Right. And, uh, it was, it was scary, but it, honestly, when we look back at it, we feel really proud of the fact that we made it through with very little help. We only had each other and this tiny screaming human um, <laughs> to get through it. And with everything that happened over the last two years, he has been at least the, the biggest silver lining. He's been a great distraction. Um, he's, you know, stayed healthy, which we're so, uh, you know, thankful for, but, um, I don't know that when I think about 2020, I'll think just of the pandemic. I'll think of the fact sure. that we had we had Thomas, and uh, he really made everything so much easier to bear. That's great, great to hear. Uh, talk about some of your interests uh, when you're not working. You like cooking, hiking, being outside in nature, um, pit bull and dog rescues. Tell me about some of those. So, um, being outside is definitely number one for me, um, especially since like travel has been a little bit more difficult in the last couple of years, yeah. but I try to get outside to walk every day. Um, I try to plan little day trips or weekend trips that are somewhat local to get outside and hike. Um, and then of course cooking. Yeah. I look forward to that at the end of my day. It can, it, it's, it's, you know, without leaving my house, because since I work at home, mm -hmm. um, at the end of the day, when I sign off on my computer, making dinner for us at least is a is a natural break in like my mindset. Um, yeah, and then the dog rescue. I um, when we lived in Philly, I was a little bit more involved with the local rescues there, and we had adopted um, a dog who we then had for about seven and a half years, and then she sadly passed away this fall or last fall. Um, but now we have a cat. So any animal, I, I'm someone who is an animal person and I, I really love the idea of, you know, giving a home to those who don't have them. That's great. Did you participate in the Betty White challenge early in 2022? <laughs> yes, of course. Um, <laughs> the, the, I, I like to support the rescue where we got our dog in Philly, um, which is called saved me. Great. Um, okay. And speaking of, you know, you're in, your enjoyment of being outside in nature. Um, you were able to go for a sabbatical uh, with your husband in New Zealand and Australia. Tell us about that experience. Yeah, so we were so lucky. The company, my husband also works for the same company. We have different functions, but okay. uh, we, we work there together. And um, there's this amazing perk where once you're here for five years, you get to take a five week paid sabbatical. Like they turn off your email, you don't, you don't, you, go away and you don't look back for five weeks. And this was before we had, a, we had our son. Okay. So we um, were able to really make the most of it. And we went to New Zealand and Australia for three weeks, um, which if you're going to go there, you have to go for a long time because it takes sure. you so long to get there. Yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, it was just a fantastic time. I think the, the highlight 
there were a lot of highlights, but one of the main highlights was we went camping in the outback and okay. saw kangaroos and dingoes and snakes. I got to hold a little baby kangaroo because wow. they had kangaroo rescues. So in the theme of liking animal rescue, we visited this kangaroo rescue and uh, yeah, it was just um, such an amazing time. It sounds amazing, but really scary at the same time because whenever I hear people talk about Australia, that's like all the deadly things that you can encounter and you're out yeah. sleeping in the wild with them. Yeah, it was so cool. Um, we slept on these kind of like open um, sleeping bags, not even on tents. You're just on the ground and you could, you could see like more stars than I even knew existed. Yeah. But there are snakes and dingoes just around you. You're just, you know, hoping that they stay away from the fire and the humans. Um, I mean, it was fine. <laughs> I would definitely recommend it to anyone who goes there. Go to go to the Outback, spend the time. But you can also do it in a in a more glamping kind of way. Um, yeah. Which, if we ever do it again, we will go that route just <laughs> just because because it was hard. Yeah. It was in the moment. It was very difficult and very <laughs> hot. So having a nice like air conditioned camper to go back to at the end of the that night would good. also be appreciated. Yeah, I think if I ever have the uh, opportunity to do that, that's how I'm going to do it. Um, but it sounds awesome. And uh, any any other things that you're looking forward to do? Any plans for the future? Being with the last couple of years have been what they have been. It's um, trying to enjoy the little things. Um, you know, my son will be too soon. So trying to soak up as much as the little the, of the little toddler that I have right now. Yeah. Uh, my sister's getting married later this year. So that's like the big thing. Um, so I'm excited for that. Exciting. Well, Rihanna, it's been great uh, catching up with you today, and uh, congratulations on all your success after Shawnee, and we wish you uh, nothing but continued success in the future. Thank you. Thanks nice for being talking with, with you. And that's all for this episode of Where Are They Now? For other Lenape District alumnus interviews, check us out online at youtube.com slash Lenape District TV. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.